Hi everyone, this month's theme is all about music exams. So in today's video, I wanna go over some general questions about music exams that teachers who haven't tried them may be asking themselves. Things like, should my students take exams? How do I know which exam board to choose? Can students use the syllabus without taking the exam? Who can sit exams? And a few other questions like those. Hi, I'm Tim Topham and welcome to the Top Music Channel. It's great to have you with us again. And here we just love sharing resources and teaching ideas for studio teachers. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below if you've got any questions or you'd like to add your own thoughts about music exams. All right, let's dive in. So the number one question to be asking is, should my student be taking an exam? And back in the old days in Australia, UK, New Zealand, some of the Commonwealth countries, it was pretty common that all students would be expected to do exams and they would do an exam a year and they would do that all the way through. And that was just how it was. Now we're thinking a little bit differently because exams don't suit every student and not every student gets the same benefits from exams. Now we talked about uh, pros and cons of music exams in a previous video. We'll link to that. But some of the main considerations that you should be thinking about when it comes to whether you should get your students to sit an exam would be, is it gonna be a motivating factor or is it going to just reduce all the work that you can do with that student? So for example, if you are going to be presenting a student for an exam, they need to get their pieces really, really good. And they probably will have some oral tests, sight reading, general knowledge, technical work to go along with that exam. It takes a long time to prepare. So you need to be aware that preparing for an exam will take time away from other aspects of music learning, such as composing and arranging and playing by ear and creative tasks and games and those kinds of things. So that's a really important consideration for students. And I always say that it's much better to approach an exam in the way of, well, you've learned all this music this year, let's say 10 pieces or more, why don't we choose three or four of them and sit the exam? You're ready for it, we're ready to go now. Rather than the other way by saying, okay, let's go for that grade seven exam this year. You're gonna to need to prepare these six pieces. We better start now. It's gonna be an absolute trial to get them up to scratch in time. That's just the wrong way to approach exams in my opinion. So should your students take exams? Well, you can certainly think of them as a great motivator for certain students. The students need to be invested in having the exam as a motivating factor, but it can certainly encourage practice and get uh, students at their instrument and working on pieces and their technical work, and they will improve, there's no doubt about that. It also gives parents a much easier way to encourage practice if there's a known goal at a set time. And as we said in the other video, exams make progression really visible. As a teacher, you can see how your students are going. Students can see how they're going. They can compare themselves to other students. Not always the best thing, but it does happen. And they can see their progress year to year. And there's no doubt that having these kinds of certificates on the wall is a great incentive to performing well at an exam. So in summary, it's really up to you and your students and their parents to decide whether exams are right for them. But whatever you do, try to avoid the temptation to jump on the exam express and just run your studio as a freight train with every student doing an exam a year. It's not gonna be very beneficial for all those students. And you know, in my opinion, that approach, that sort of linear approach of prog yearly progression through exams will perhaps suit and be pos a positive experience for maybe 2% of your studio. But for the other 98%, we really do have to think really hard about what their goals are, what their aspirations are, what they're trying to achieve, what you're trying to achieve, and where exams fit into that. Okay, so question two is, which exam board do I use? And we're super lucky in 2023. There are more and more exam boards, it would seem, beginning each and every year. We've got the Universal Music Exams recently started here in Australia. We've got the Music Teachers Board, another creative exam board that's actually been going for some time in the UK, but is now gaining popularity. And then we've got the, the, big, the big ones, the AMEB here in Australia, the ABRSM in the United Kingdom, Trinity College London, London College of Music, <laughs> you name it. I haven't mentioned even close to them all. I mean, there's ANSCA. ANZCA, uh, that's the Australia New Zealand Cultural Arts Board, there's St. Cecilia, there's Piano Guild, uh, and then of course if we go over to America we've got the RCM, we've got MTAC, and lots of the local music associations have their own exam syllabuses, syllabi. So there is no shortage of choice when it comes to what exam board you should be using. But some of the considerations are what are the requirements? How arduous are the requirements? Because all the exam boards vary. Can you do repertoire only exams where students just perform their 
pieces. They don't have to do any of the supplementary activities or skills like technical work or sight reading. Uh, how much does it cost? Where and how is it assessed? Is it online or is it in person? And I think most importantly, what music is the student allowed to choose to play? Some exam boards, such as the ABRSM, bring out books with the exam pieces that allowed for the next two years, I think it is, and they change each two years. Other exam boards, like the AMEB here, the Piano for Leisure syllabus, you're able to choose, you play three pieces, and two of those need to be from the uh, listed set syllabus, and one of them can be free choice. And then you go to the other end of the spectrum with the new UME exams here in Australia, where you can choose all pieces as long as they are at the right standard. So you've, you've got a huge range of opportunity when it comes to music making. You've also got the ABRSM jazz syllabus. You've got rock school here in Australia and in London. And exam boards like uh, ANSCA and Trinity and perhaps others as well have improvisation syllabuses too, or at least elements of their exams that include improvisation, which is obviously a great thing to have assessed. And then one of the other differences is that if you are doing an exam that requires oral tests and sight reading and general knowledge, all the exam boards test those in different ways too. And some of the exam boards have much more practical oral tests, for example, than others. So a comparison between the AMEB, for example, and Trinity, you would see that the oral tests are significantly different. And I've actually recorded Facebook Live videos about that before. So the long and short of which, <laughs> the cat's here, the long and short of which exam board to use really comes down to you and you're just gonna have to do some research. I will put a link in the comments to a comparison of exam boards that I did, but it's a few years ago and these requirements do change and particularly after the pandemic, things have changed a lot. So definitely go and explore and also have a look at the podcast as well, topmusic.co slash podcast. We'll put a link to some of the interviews we've done about some of the main exam boards, particularly some of the newer exam boards, more recently the MTB and the UME exams. Okay, another question that might come up is, can I use the syllabus without the student taking the exam? And the answer is absolutely. You can choose any of the syllabuses or syllabi from the exam boards and use the music and the technical work and oral tests and all those kinds of things without having the student sit the exam. Not a problem at all. And in actual fact, it's not a bad way to help you um, understand leveling of pieces and where pieces sit at, uh, at different stages of development. Uh, and particularly with the technical work, being able to assign uh, technical work that increases as students go up, uh, you can definitely use any number of the exam boards, listings of scales and technical work to make sure that your students are assessing, are ascending through a set plan. I've now got both cats in here. And we've also had a great question from Jeff, one of our members who asked, can adults who are returning to playing the piano participate in an exam program? And absolutely. While exams, you know, you may immediately think of little kids doing exams, that's actually not the truth really because students of any age can participate in exams and go and sit um, an exam. So your 70 or 80 year old student, if they really wanna pass that grade one or preliminary exam, there's nothing stopping them at all. And that leads me to the last question, who can sit exams? Well, as I've said, just about anyone. Just make sure, as I mentioned earlier, that the exam is used in the right way. It's a tool to assess where a student is at at that moment. It's not designed as a curriculum. And this has been stated by the exam boards themselves. We are not here to provide a curriculum. We are an assessment body. It's like taking your pulse at a moment in time. This is what your pulse is right now, or this is your temperature. This is how you're performing right now at this level. Uh, it's not designed to be something that is the be all and end all of music education in lessons. Now, if you do have older students who would like to take an exam, but they feel a little bit intimidated by going for a piano exam in an exam center when it's full of kids, then we're very lucky that there are lots of video exam options now post pandemic. And pretty much all of the exam boards now offer the opportunity for students to record their playing and, and have that assessed rather than play live. Now, the only requirement normally for those video assessments is that students record the music in one take without any cuts, which does cause some problems because perfectionist students What's gonna happen? Well, they're gonna to wanna to record that again and again and again and again until it's as good as it possibly can be, which, you know, is kind of good for practice, I guess. There's nothing wrong with that, uh, but can be a little bit of 
a drain if really all you want to do is get the exam done. Uh, so sometimes giving students, and look, they, they can, they normally record these at home. So it's a little bit out of the teacher's realm as to how many takes they do, but you can say, look, record it three times and um, I'll help you choose the best of the three takes or something like that. Otherwise it can be a really long process for students that really want to get everything right. Unfortunately, it's just not possible to be absolutely perfect. Well, very unlikely. So just going for the best recording can be great, but that can be fantastic for your retirees who would like to do an exam but don't want to go in for um, a formal exam in an exam center. So that's a quick overview. I hope those questions have been useful to you. If you have any others, then please leave a comment below. I'll be delighted to answer it on whatever channel you're watching this. And just as a, a quick reminder, you know, piano exams, music exams are a great motivator for students of all ages. Everyone can get involved. You can use the materials without uh, actually taking the exam, but I just would stress, yeah, use exams as a way to test the student's ability at a particular point in time. Try to avoid that temptation that you were probably taught, as I was taught as a teacher, that you need to progress through every single grade every year, and that's the way music is taught because the exam boards will say it as well. That's not the best way to teach music. Anyway, have a great time and I'll speak to you soon.